So we're going to come out and uh, with a, uh, it's fourth gen course. This is based on Haswell. But we're making a number of changes, and we typically do not do this, right? So when we come out with a processor like Haswell, et cetera, then we don't make any substantial changes to it. We just bump the frequency a little bit until we come out with the next one, right? But several months ago, as again, as we were stepping back and saying, you know, wow, we have this customer base, and frankly, we're frustrating with some of our most loyal customers, like all the people you saw at that extreme masters event, because we're not bringing them enough performance. It's the kind of, we went out, talked to customers, got this feedback, not new to us. You guys report some of this, right? So you, you know this well. So what can we do for that customer base? And by the way, I don't want it to intercept the next big platform. What can we do now? And then build on that with the roadmap going forward. And so with a small tiger team of, of some of the most senior engineering folks at Intel, we did a little huddle, figured out what can we do, and this is the part we're doing, and it will be available just, you know, less than a year, you know, six to seven months after the time we conceived it. So a pretty quick turn, especially for what we're doing with it, which is we are, we've spun the package, so we have a new package. We have new thermal interface material on it. Uh, we've got, we'll be supported by the nine series chipset, so our next chipset. And this is gonna bring a really nice bump in, in performance, uh, just base performance as well as uh, overclocking. So we are really excited about this. And so I told the team, you know, I don't really want to call it just the next Haswell or the next fourth gen core, because what else could we do? It turns out we have a few gamers in Intel, a lot actually, and so we had a little internal contest to name it, and I told them, you know, I, I, gang, I'm not voting on this. I'm probably not the target market. But this is the name uh, the internal team came up with, Devil's Canyon, so codenamed Devil's Canyon. We'll come out with this in uh, mid-14, and we're really excited about it. Our team's really excited about it. This, this is the first one off the line with the new package. We just got it back last week. Engineering team tells me it's uh, right on track with the performance targets that we set. Um, so we'll get it out very, very quickly mid-year. Really excited about this one. So stay tuned. We'll have a lot more details on, and specifics on this as we get closer to launch. Okay. And so with that, again, you know, my main focus for, for wanting to talk to you today was that the desktop is an important uh, business and market to Intel. We're investing in it. And we're focused with our customers in the industry on reinventing the category and bringing new and exciting form factors, uh, usages, experiences, and, and new products. And of course, I talked about the big things we're announcing, which is around uh, the ready mode technology, all the new software for the portable all-in-ones, and uh, the four new products I just talked through for the enthusiast space. So all four of those, you know, new products that within the last uh, six months, you know, adding them to the roadmap. Okay? And so with that, uh, thank you very much. And I think we're going to open it up for some questions. Right. Let's do a quick Q&A session. One thing I want you to mention is cards on people's oh, chairs. Oh, thank you. Really app. Thank yeah. You. So the CyberLink app, the one I, I tried to show you, really, it worked in practice. Eh, you know, so I don't know. But uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic app. You're going to love it for editing photo and video. So we're making that available to all of you guys. You get a, a, a pre-release that goes into production in April, but uh, we've got this for you, and you can go download it, and it's got all the instructions here to go to go get that and check it out. Yeah, and I'll be emailing you a code for that, so come to me. You can also come to me for the Devil's Canyon sampling program. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. By the way, uh, you know, I've told the, 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 the inside, folks inside of Intel, you cannot imagine how many beta testers have raised their hand. So we have to kind of hold them off so we can get some samples for you guys. I told them they'll have to wait. All right, so okay, questions. Okay, questions, yes. You got a mic over here, a mic over there. Can you tell us what category uh, Devil's Canyon is? Is it I-5 or I-7? Yes, both. Both, I-5 and I-7. And, and can, it be, can it be overclocked? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I was wondering why do you guys have to release, or why does it have to be in the nine series chipset if it's not, uh, you know, necessarily a different chip internally, like the architecture? 
Why did you guys decide to go with the nine series chips instead of the previous chips? We wanted to get as much of performance boost as we could and so optimize for the next chipset we had coming out. And that chipset was coming out anyway, right? It's not that's not new to the platform. And so we just paired it and timed it with that. Okay. I just had a quick question about the uh, thermal paste and yeah. the interface controller you're using. Are you going back soldered or is it a material mm -hmm. or we'll tell you all about it when okay. we launch. I knew we'd get a lot of questions on this. Or we're just giving you a sneak. Normally, we don't do any of this till launch, but I was so excited I couldn't wait, so I just wanted to tell you guys it was coming. We're a little confused. Uh, will Broadwell socketed work in an existing Haswell uh, nine series chipset port? It will be drop a drop into the existing Haswell port. Yes. Eight or nine? Uh, eight and nine. Wait, where's my team? Nine series. Nine series only. Nine series only. Where is your 22 nanometer? Uh, which? 14, what is it? 14 or 22? Oh, oh, the Broadwell one is 14 nanometer. Mm -hmm. All the other ones, which are Haswell architecture based, are 22. Okay. I know it's kind of just sort of the uh, premise of Broadwell, but uh, with the nuke, which you haven't really, you didn't really talk about here, um, is there any, prevent, any, any provision going forward to, to add any sort of uh, uh, expansion capability for discrete graphics, whether it be uh, some sort of discrete mobile chip from a third party supplier or some sort of mini, you know, like, uh, add on card. So, so say the first part of your question again. Sorry, sorry with, with the new, I mean, is there yeah. any provision to add on discrete graphics in the future, whether it be an expansion card or just a discrete chip of some sort? Uh, I, I, we have to get, I, I'd have to go back to the Nook team and get an answer. But uh, essentially, that this is Nook. We're, you know, in the category of mini and tiny PCs. Um, we have gone from uh, just the first version, adding all kinds of cool things to this, you know, hard drive capability, all that kind of stuff. But for that specific thing, well, we can go ask the team and get back to you. Gigabyte specifics, but I can tell you we are not messing with power just so that you can overclock it. So just expect the same as what we have today. We're, you know, we, we're frankly, we're doing the hard work just to crank up the performance. So that, you don't have to change power supplies and thermal solutions. Like that. On this, the uh, Solar Anniversary Edition, uh, do you have a right? 50th anniversary edition. Oh, sorry, sorry. There is no Celeron anniversary edition. <laughs> and, yeah. well, actually, it reminds me of the original uh, Celeron, because Celeron was a great overclocking part in the very early days. Um, but the, the Pentium, actually, you could enter the 20th anniversary of the P54C, which was.